for the first time in 1055T's history, he booted with 4.2 gigahertz. Yeah, I'm really surprised. I'm messing around with the RAM speeds and all that, trying to learn a little bit more about overclocking the RAM. But I thought, hey, I give it a shot because I haven't tried overclocking 4.2 with the new power supply yet. And I'm surprised that he actually booted. So, I'm going to find out if it's anywhere near stable. Right now it's showing, I don't know if you can see that, but it's showing at 32 degrees Celsius. On idle, and here's the core temperature, 19 degrees Celsius. But I'm not going to believe in that. I'm going to go with 32. So, we'll see if 4.2 gigahertz, it's real. Or not. Alright, OCCT. I'm just going to let it run for a while. If it doesn't crash, congratulations, Triple C. You have a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. I'm surprised about the temperature. Right now, 43, 44 and climbing. But, my CPU is now dual fan set up. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, it crashed. But it does good. At least for a while. Let's try a little bit more voltage. Okay, 1.536 volt on the same settings and we'll see if it will be stable now okay now the idle time is almost the same 34 degrees celsius yeah yeah you can see it like that okay good so go for it ah oh, crashed right away that sucks mm. Okay, another else. attempt. This time around 1.55 volts. That temperature is really good, surprisingly. Yeah, uh, this multiple when it's on low, you add that two or three value on the traditionally known as uh, one side bus, this on AMD CPU code reference card. Anyway. You add a little bit to make it go a little faster. Okay, error detected in core 2, but didn't crash the computer. Oh, that's good. That means there's still room to tweak. Okay, so this time around I drop it to 297 actually. And here it says 298. But, let's see the difference. Alright, there you go. Yeah, see what I mean? You add that 3 <coughs> on the value when it's on load. Well, I suppose it's not a bad thing. I mean, make it faster, but I 
don't think it can do more than 4.2 gigahertz. But well, we'll see if this one's stable enough. Because that's I call that 4.2, even though I set it to 297. That technically it should run at 4.17 something gigahertz, but I think it's fair to say this is a 4.2 setup. Since I'm low, you will do a 4.2 gigahertz. Temperature at 51 so far. Still acceptable. Although, take those temperature with a grain of salt. They're not real sensors. That core temp is never correct. And this is the closest thing to correct because this is the highest value. And all sensors that they have offered on the motherboard. Who knew such a simple technology, they can never get it right, or never bother to get it right. Doesn't matter if it's a high-end motherboard, or if it's a, uh, well, this, this one's not cheap, but, or if it's like, uh, not the top tier motherboard. They never got those temperature sensors right. And what is up with the core temp? I mean, if you can't get it done right, why bother leaving it in there at all? Might as well not have it. What's the point? There's no point. There's no point but to lie to certain people, you know? 56 degrees, still acceptable. Wow, you broke two minutes already. That's improvement. We will see if it will do 10 minutes. If it do 10 minutes, it's pretty much stable. Don't you think so? I mean, even if YouTube allows me to do the one hour test, I don't think my battery will last for that long anyway, so I don't know. It's besides the point, but ah, well, I gotta find something to say right now, right? Still remains at 56 degrees Celsius. I guess that's pretty much the low temp at 1.55 volt, which makes Sayafia a one hell of a cooler for the money, man. I used to think that uh, the thermal right true that I bought last year is the best cooler that I ever used. And then I got that eco cooler, which is the one piece water cooling. I thought that was great. And then I bought this one. I should have bought it before that, but then and then I decided to use this one. This cooler it's only forty five dollars. Much cheaper than the other coolers that I thought did the best. And turns out this one does the best job out of them all. Really good cooler to consider if you're on the budget. Kitty cat, kitty cat. Kitty cat does what the kitty cat does. <laughs> oh well. Uh, stress test sucks. So boring. Sally is the only way to prove whatever that you're claiming with your overclocking. But then there's always some people 
There's always some people had to pull your legs. Oh, you have to do a, a 24 hour test, otherwise it doesn't count. Oh, you have to do like an 8 hour test, otherwise it doesn't count. Like everybody's got 8 hours to spend sitting there looking at this thing or not use your computer while you have that very little free time. I mean, 10 minutes is pretty much the most I can spare. Regardless if I got a netbook or not, it's not the same. I want to play some video games. I want to do some benchmarks. I don't got like 8 hours or 24 hours to just let it sit there and burn itself to death. Oh, temperature rise, 59. After this, I'm gonna run 3D Mark Vantage. See what I can get. And I should install 3D Mark 06. Yeah, I give I give 3D Mark 11 a run as well. See how they turn out. The worst thing to do when you try to wait for the time to pass is to wait for time to pass. The same thing at work or at school. If you're bored, you get sleepy. 61! Oh my god, it's still climbing! Oh well. What are the chances of me actually stressing this thing for this long a time on a video game anyway? In reality, it will probably never pass 55. Or, I can believe in the core 10. If I do, it's not even 50. Oh, but that's not the case. I bet if I have the case side door open, it will probably do an even better job. But then I said cheating. Because I do want the doors to be closed. He made it for 10 minutes. I said it's pretty stable. Wow. Congratulations to me. 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Thanks for the new Corsair 950 watt power supply. It's proven 
with a good power supply, you can go further.